grateful that John has written for us so that we could have a, a insight as to who you are and the love that you had towards us. Pray that you'd be with us as we study and that we'll get from it the, some of the lessons that you would have us to so that we can be better sons and daughters of yours. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So Gospel of John, and where we left off was we left off with, with um, Jesus talking to Peter. And the conversation that they had was probably a bit uncomfortable because Jesus asked Peter a simple question. He said, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? And this is, they'd just finished eating. They were kind of sitting around. And so Peter says, yes, I do love you, Lord. And so the Lord says, feed my lambs. Now, a little later on, Jesus asked him another question. And it's the same question. Simon, son of John, do you love me? And Peter again answered, or Peter answered again. He goes, Lord, I love you. And so Jesus told him, tend my sheep. A little bit later on, Jesus asked John or asked Peter a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And Peter was a little distraught at this time. He said to him the third time, when he said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, do you love me? He said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Now, we got into this a little bit last week where Jesus asked John, or I'm sorry, asked Peter three times if he loved him. And it seems to coincide with the, the three times that, that Peter had denied Jesus. And when he had done that, he went off and he wept bitterly. And so we see here that Peter was grieved because Jesus had asked him a third time. And he does say here that you know everything. And when he said, feed my sheep, he then said, truly, truly, I say to you, when you were young, you used to dress yourself and walk wherever you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands, and another will dress you and carry you where you do not want to go. John tells us that this he said to show what, by what kind of death he was to glorify God. Now, when just before Peter denied Jesus. He had said that he would follow him even to death. And what we see here is Jesus says, you will follow me. And according to what he said here, you will follow me in death. In fact, he would die in the service to Christ. Notice that John says here in 21 and verse 19, it says, after saying this, he said to him, Follow me. Follow me. Does that sound familiar? Let's go back to Mark. The Gospel of Mark tells us a little bit about when Jesus was calling his disciples. It says, passing along the Sea of Galilee. Remember, they're at the Sea of Galilee now. It says, when they were at the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, his brother, the brother of Simon casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. Jesus said to them, follow me, I will, and I will make you become fishers of men. This idea of follow me, is, it's, isn't it almost like he's inviting him again to be his disciple? He's saying, follow me. He didn't give up on Peter. 
Peter, I think, felt very poorly after denying his Lord. And now here he is in the presence of the risen Savior who had fulfilled everything that he said. He had even raised himself from the dead. And so now he's getting the opportunity to be asked again by Jesus to follow me. Isn't that something? Isn't that, isn't that encouraging that someone who slipped and fell can get back up? and continue to serve. Yes? So the, the first time when he chose to follow him, it was all kind of like new and exciting and being part of you know, this wonderful adventure. And now Jesus is saying, now that you're a cost. Yes. I'm asking you again. Right. It, it, it's been some three, three and a half years, hasn't it? And so he's, this, this invitation is a new. This is a new invitation where he's telling Peter, follow me. Look at, look at how John continues here. Verse 20 and 21, Peter turned and saw the disciple whom Jesus loved following them. It's the one who had been reclining at table close to him when he'd said, Lord, who is it that's going to betray you? Who is, who is this disciple that Jesus loved? John. Now we've seen this again, and he refers to himself always as this disciple whom Jesus loved. When Peter saw him, he said to Jesus, Lord, what about this man? Now, remember what did Jesus just tell Peter? Yeah, you're going to be executed. You're going to be hung on a cross like I was. You're going to die for me. Wouldn't that be kind of distraughting or dis disturbing? to you to if, so, if the Lord had told you that. So he says, what about this man? Kind of have to ask yourself, what, you know, how would we react to being told that we were going to die in the service of the Lord? Look at what Jesus tells him. He says, if it is my will that he remain until I come, what is that to you? You follow me. How does that apply to us? Our walk is our own. It's our relationship with the Lord. You know, he, he did tell Peter something that was going to happen. He mentioned something about John, didn't he? Look at, what, look at what John tells us. This is some information John tells us. The other Gospels don't record this said, so the saying spread abroad among the brothers that this disciple was not to die. Yet Jesus did not say to him that he was not to die, but that if it is my will that he remain until I come, what is that to you? And then this is where we get a little bit more information. John tells us, the reader, he says, this is the disciple who is bearing witness about these things and who has written these things. And we know that his testimony is true. This is John taking ownership of what he's written here, right? He's saying, I am that dis disciple that Jesus loved. This is my record of what he said. Larry asked a while back, several weeks ago, you asked me what I thought about John calling himself the disciple whom Jesus loved. Why would he do that? Well, there's a lot of Johns listed in the Bible. Even, even Peter's father was named John, so there's, there's lots of Johns there. But I just threw a few thoughts up here. We have Peter. He was one of the first disciples. He was sometimes an impulsive person, but he was a faithful faithful follower of Jesus and a strong disciple. He was an apostle and he died a martyr. John, also a faithful follower of Jesus, also a strong disciple or an apostle. He lived a long life of service. Attempts were made on his life according to tradition. He outlived all the other apostles. Now, 
when did we say the Gospel of John was written? Many years later. Okay, towards the end of the first century. Peter had been martyred. Paul had been martyred. Most all the other apostles were probably dead. John is in his old age. He's writing down a lot of the things that he has seen, a lot of the things he's experienced. Have you ever heard of survivor's guilt? Could it be that he's saying that, well, Jesus loves me. I'm the apostle Jesus loved. Here he was, the end of his life, writing down and talking about some of these things. I don't think John was trying to say he was loved more than the other apostles, more than any of the other disciples, because one of the things that we see is that after the resurrection of Christ, when these apostles were going about delivering the message, who was there? Peter and John, right? Beginning of Acts, Acts chapter 3, lame be the lame beggar that was healed. They were both there. They were brought before the, the council, the Jews that had crucified and put to death Jesus. They were there. They were, they were thrilled at being counted worthy to be preaching the gospel of Christ. They, went, they were sent to Samaria where the gospel had been preached there. So Peter and John, I don't think there was a challenge here. These were co-workers. These were men who, who laid aside differences, who were there to serve the Lord. They'd witnessed things that had never been seen before. They witnessed the, the, the life of Christ, the death of Christ, and his resurrection. And so they were there to, they were, they were sending out this message. This brings us to this verse. This is the very last verse of John. John chapter 21, verse 25. It says, now there are also many other things that Jesus did. Were every one of them to be written, I suppose that the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. Remember, John saw a lot of things, didn't he? He's, he's saying, I didn't record everything here. What I've written here is for what reason? That you might believe. That's the whole reason he did this. Forrest, would you go ahead and put up the next, uh, the next uh, slide? Um, anybody have any thoughts, any comments on this? Gandhi. Don't we count ourselves as the disciple whom Jesus loved? I mean, didn't he die for us? He died for all of us, didn't he? I wanted to go back and kind of review some of the things that we talked about when we introduced this, this study of the Gospel of John. And so, just a, just a few things. We talked about John the man, John the writer, why the Gospel of John was so different from the other Gospels. Why did Jesus, or why did John write this gospel? These were all things that, that we talked about in the beginning. And here at the end, after reading these 21 chapters, this is really a short book. You could sit and read it in a, a sitting. And so we get a lot of information here. Remember, he had a brother, didn't he? Son of Zebedee. His, Zebedee was his father, and he was the brother of James talked about uh, how he was 
how he became a, a disciple of Christ. Um, it's mentioned several times about, about these two brothers, these brothers of Zebedee, James and John. Um, talked about what they were. They were fishermen, right? Anyone remember who their partners were? Yeah, they were, they were partners with Peter and Andrew, weren't they? So they, they had some commonality even before meeting Jesus. They were, they were associated. But they were also close friends of Jesus. Peter, James, and John, right? There were, lot, there were some things that were mentioned about them. These are some of the things that they witnessed as those three special disciples of Christ, raising of the ruler of the synagogue's daughter from the dead, the Mount of Transfiguration, Jesus praying in Gethsemane. These were things that these were things that they got to witness, being those close friends of of, of Jesus. What happened to James? He, he was first martyr. He was beheaded. It, it's also the only, or the only apostle whose record we have recorded that happened to him. So this, this close friend of Jesus, this brother of John, was the first one to die, and he died fairly soon after, the, after, after uh, beginning to teach the gospel. Another thing we mentioned about John was how ambitious he was. Why did, why did we say ambitious? Right. It, and actually, there's a couple of accounts that talks about James and John, and then another account says that their mother came to him and said, uh, grant, grant us to sit one at your right hand and one at your left in your glory. I wonder if John looks back on some of these things and thinks how foolish. You know, he had, he had witnessed all these things about Jesus, and then when he goes in, he records for us what his memories are in this Gospel of John. There's some things he doesn't include. How about zealous? Anyone remember why we said something about zealous? They were traveling with Jesus, going through, going up. When Jesus set his face to Jerusalem and messengers were set a, sent ahead of him, James and John saw that, um, James and John saw that they weren't welcoming Jesus. They said, Lord, do you want us to call, tell fire to come down from heaven and consume them? Now look at John in these later years. John and, John and the, the first and second and third books of John. Can you believe that this was a guy that wanted to call fire down on someone? Another way that they were, des they were described, sons of thunder. What's that bring to mind? Meek and quiet, peaceful. This disciple who's always talking about love, love, love. What a change. What a change that this man John had in his life because of knowing Jesus. He also had, he also had acquaintances, didn't he? He had, he had connections, right? We talked about some of these connections, and in fact, John mentioned it. He talked about that he was known to the high priest. Well, that's pretty neat to know someone in such a position of authority, right? But who did he know that was much more important? He knew Christ. He knew the Son of God. Another thing about John is it mentioned as being a pillar of the church in Jerusalem. In Galatians 2 and verse 9, who wrote Galatians? Paul, right? Paul is, 
Paul is giving an account here. He says, and when James and Cephas and John, who seemed to be pillars, received the grace that was given to me, they gave the right hand of fellowship to Barnabas and me, that we should go to the Gentiles, and they did them circumcised. So John had continued on. We see Peter, John, James. This isn't James, his brother, by the way. But there was, these are, these are ones that, that went on to, to uh, found the church, if you will, beginning of the church. This one we just talked about, rumored not to die. And uh, as, we, as we just mentioned, he, he said it, it wasn't that he would live forever. It's just that the Lord could have left, let him live until he came again. Something else we didn't touch on very much is John the Elder. Where do we get that idea? Tradition? How about in 2nd and 3rd John? Well, yeah, he, there, there is history that says that he was associated with the church at Ephesus. Yeah. But John addresses himself. He says he, he addresses himself as the elder to the elect lady and her children in 2nd John. In 3rd John, he talks about he's the elder, and then he mentions the letter being to his beloved Gaius, whom I love in truth. So he, he did mention a few of those things. One of the, uh, we know who wrote the Gospel of John. It was, it was John the Apostle. John also wrote the book of Revelation. Probably, possibly in the same last few years. Talk about uh, between 90 and 100 is when the Gospel of John was probably written. Book of Revelation is thought to have been written around 96. And so those were some, some books that he wrote. And he also wrote 1st, 2nd, 3rd John. And again, these were around 100, around the end of that first century. So John was pretty elderly, pretty old, probably needed some help getting around. could be. He, uh, yeah, we just see that he did address himself as the elder, and it could have just been elderly or older. So let's, let's review this. Oops. We talked about how that the, the Gospel of John was different from the other Gospels. And through our study, I did try to bring up some things that were mentioned in the other Gospels that John did not include. And as we know, John included what he included. He included enough for us to believe and that our, our belief could be strengthened. So one of the, uh, I forget where I got this from, but the likely answer for the reason that John is different from the other gospels is it was written in a different context in a different time than the synoptics. Synoptics would be Matthew, Mark, and Luke probably near the end of the first century, and John is addressing issues of importance and concern for the church of his day. When we look at Christianity, it doesn't stay stagnant, does it? It changes, it grows. And so what we see here is that as John was witnessing the things that were going on, he was aware of those other gospels. He knew probably who wrote them. But what we see here is that his, his emphasis was on who Jesus was, that Jesus was flesh. He came in the flesh. He died and was resurrected. And he was the Son of God. 
and that was the things that he was wanting to emphasize. By the end of this first century, there were other teachings that were coming around. Have anybody heard the, the, the term Gnostic? Gnostic teachers, there, there was a belief that you could do whatever in the body, but Jesus couldn't have been physical because he was you know, the son of God, he was perfect. And so John was trying to address some of these things in this last gospel. Even when he started out, he said, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God. He talks about how that word came in the flesh and dwelt among men. Those are all things that he was pointing out because those were challenges, things that the church was facing by the end of that first century. That's not very long. That's 30, 40 years into, into being the gospel. And things were already needing to be addressed. And John took the opportunity to do that. Wanted to just bring out a couple of similarities between the, uh, the when, when John talks about uh, in the book of Revelation, Revelation was probably written shortly after this. He talks about the word, talks about the lamb, the lamb that was slain. He has a little bit of numerology in, in John, not quite as prevalent as, as it is in the book of Revelation, but there's seven I am statements. Um, said there were seven public miracles that were recorded. Talks about seven feasts that were mentioned by name. Some of them were repeated, obviously. But, but these, are, these are things that, you know, John was writing in ways that we don't always go into that great of a depth for. But there are some similarities there with, with, the, with the numbers and some of the things. So it all boils down to this. Why did John write this gospel? This we... This we don't even have to guess, he tells us. John 20, 30, and 31. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that, and that by believing you may have life in his name. What are your thoughts about this gospel? I've been doing a lot of talking, and uh, sometimes I feel we kind of had to to get through this. It's like, who would have thought you would take six months to get through 21 chapters? But what are some of your thoughts? Yeah. That's, yeah, that's old, isn't it? So he, he was around for a long time. So he got to witness, he got to witness a lot of things, didn't he? He got to witness when Jesus died, when Jesus was resurrected. He got to live long enough to see some of the early struggles, right? Some of the early things that, that Christianity was, was, was struggling with, things like this Gnostic teaching. Now, are you getting into Revelation, or you mean because he he did he did um, envision Jesus in heaven, didn't he? In that in that uh, Revelation account, and so he did get to see Jesus in his glory, didn't he? Right. 
because it was too much for him to see. Yeah. Yeah. Any other thoughts about, about the gospel here of John? Anyone learn anything new? Okay, so we see that John has, has put some thought into how he's presenting it. Like, not, not that Matthew, Mark, and Luke did not, but they were more of a of recording, you know, the events of Jesus' life. Um, what, what about the Gospel of Luke? We actually have a reason it was written, right? Remember, uh, I don't remember the exact verse, but it talks about how that... Um, Luke addresses Theophilus. He says, I'm writing to you so that you'll know what you believe. And so he's, he's outlining a history of Jesus' uh, recording even before Jesus' birth, but talking about John the Baptist, talking about Jesus coming, talking about Jesus' ministry, talking about Jesus' death, talking about Jesus... Jesus' resurrection. And then, then he went straight from that into Acts, where he then went into the history of the church. Any other things about, about John? Yes? It does, doesn't it? Um, you know, much like, much like when Moses wrote the law, he started with the beginning, didn't he? He, he started with Genesis, when the earth was made. And then with John, he kind of takes it on a spiritual way, doesn't he? He talks about how that Jesus was there at the beginning. Through him, all things were created. And these are, these are things that doesn't it make you really reflect upon the power of God and, and who Jesus was? I mean, Jesus, we, we, we have a tendency to think of Jesus as being, you know, he came to this earth. Well, he was around before then as well, wasn't he? He was there from the beginning. And so to see that he came down, he was willing to take upon himself the sins of man. For what purpose? so that we could live, right? Because it was our sin that separated us from God. So it's that I find that very encouraging. Yes? When you think that in the when you read, when you have a modern book or whatever, when you're reading someone's first-hand account, and it's not just in the moment of when it happened, but with John, it was many years later, so they had time to reflect on, on all things, and then... <coughs> Yeah, it is. And, and, and again, to see how much John grew, you know, just, just looking at the Gospels, looking at the other letters, looking at, looking at the life of John and seeing that he was a man with, with flaws, with challenges, but yet he continued. He persevered, didn't he? He overcame shortcomings so that he could be who Christ wanted him to be. And he was, a, he was an apostle, 
one sent by Jesus to, to, to spread that gospel. Anything else? We still have a few minutes. <laughs> Dandy? Yes. And Peter just jumps in the water. <laughs> but but I think about like how 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 that might relate to us today, like how do we come to Bible class, how do we approach our own personal Bible study, you know, is it all this exploring thing or we excited about coming and being and you know, our time do we guard that? Are we anxious to like have our time with God? And that, do, do we really understand what a blessing we have? A blessing we have in knowing that we have the Word of God at our fingertips. That, that I mean, it's like, how many Bibles do you own? I mean, we have, probably all of us have more than one Bible. I mean, many of us have a Bible on our phone. It's there. Do we, do we think to look at it? Do we think to, to take a few minutes when you have some downtime instead of going through Facebook or Pinterest or whatever? What about going through, through the Bible? How about reading some of the things that, that will help our spirits, that will help and encourage and uplift us? And as we see, John transformed in his life as well. And that, that's an example for us as well. Any other thoughts? I think that we can, we can see that there's a lot of blessings here. I think that, uh, I believe it's in the fourth quarter that we'll be covering first, second, third John and Jude, so. We'll be covering those last those last few books as well. Any other comments? Yes. Um, well, I think this is the first time in a class that I've been through John. And I think what sort of struck me was one um, how a lot of it like it seems more complicated or more thought provoking. Right. And so maybe my takeaway 
<laughs> sure, yeah. And as you said, you know, spending more time, and that, that's what I think it, it is, and that's what we see John trying to say is that, hey, I've not included everything. Like, I can't include everything that Jesus did. But I'm writing you this part so that you will believe. And that's what I think is so impressive is that, like I said, we could, you could read John, you could read the Gospel of John in a sitting, and it's not very strenuous, but he says a lot of things. There's a lot of things that we get to, to, to learn about. We get to see, we get to see Jesus. We get to understand Jesus and his glory. We get to understand Jesus as the Son of God. And we get to see the love that he had for us, the love that he had towards mankind, the things that, the things that should encourage us and make us feel, feel better about that, you know, I have my, my issues and my struggles, but I can overcome those things. I can draw closer to, to God. Appreciate everyone's participation in this class and, and uh, Next, next week we start with new classes and unfortunately I don't remember what they all are off the top of my head, but there will be new classes. There'll be a uh, class in the back, second adult classroom. There's, um, a, there'll be a class in here as well. So I wanna encourage everyone to, to go ahead and attend, attend one of those classes as well. Let's go ahead and have a word of prayer. Shall we pray? Our Father in heaven, holy and reverend is your name. We come before you giving you glory, giving you honor, for you are our God and the creator of all things. We're thankful for this day that you've created, this day that you've granted to us so that we could come together, be uplifted, be encouraged by one another, to be encouraged by your word. We pray, Lord, that our, our strength will be renewed that our commitment, our dedication, our zeal for you has been, in, has been replenished so that we could go about and, and teach your gospel to those around us, that we would be, have within us the desire to study and learn more from your word, that we could gain in wisdom, that we could gain in, in knowledge and in truth of, your, of who you are and what you've done for us. We're thankful for everyone here this morning, and we pray that you would be with all of us. Help us to, to reflect your love, reflect your mercy. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.